Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise in East Bumblefuck, New Mexico on this gorgeous spring day in February, Thursday, February 16th, 2017, I believe. Good God. So Thursday, <coughs> I'm going to bring you two ramps. This is... The first rant, and I'm just going to rant for 30 minutes because I could easily sit here for the rest of the day and bring you my latest edition of my Dump the Trumpty Hive Roundup rant where I simply go on the, the mainstream media, the alternative media, uh, YouTube, in, in radio shows, anywhere else to join the growing clamor to get rid of this motherfucker. It is time for this asshole to go. Let's cut the shit here, people. As much as I enjoy joking and laughing about Donald Trump, uh, the guy is completely out of fucking control. Completely out of control. Uh, and he needs to go. And good lord, where, where to even start? Where to even start? So where I am going to start is we're going to, of, of all the voices, is pretty much throw a dart uh, in, in, in the internet nowadays. But I've got a few people queued up with their opinions on Donald Trump. I hope I'm gonna, I got him queued up right. Uh, we're going to start out with our old buddy Paul Beckwith, climatologist Paul Beckwith, uh, before he got chipped a few days ago, and we're, we're losing Paul, but before he did get chipped, this was a snippet of Paul's interview on uh, Extinction Radio, I think on the same program I was. So this is Mike Farragut interviewing uh, Paul Beckwith, and it's a 30-minute interview. Towards the end, they drift into Trump territory. So take it away, Paul Beckwith, and tell us what you think about King Donald. It's a very dynamic um situation yeah. it's abrupt we have abrupt political change going on right now yeah, right? Well, uh, yeah. about abrupt system change or thresholds being reached or things um changing jumping from one state to another i mean we have that in in uh polit in, in u.s politics in spades right <laughs> i yeah. mean it's going on i mean this is an abrupt change with i mean what i don't get is there's so many um, inconsistencies in the U.S. I mean, you have reports from the Pentagon and the U.S. Navy and Air Force and military Ooh. talking about how climate change is going to have is going to, is affecting all their bases, especially the the Navy. You know, bases are going to be submerged. Yeah. So climate change is 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 a threat to the stability of the U.S. It's a threat to their military might. It's it's a threat. Um, it's an existential threat to us and. It's a threat multiplier, right? Multiplying yeah. other threats. And they recognize this. And they say, so surely they must say, recognize that Trump is a huge risk and danger to the U.S., right? I mean, you can't have the logic of one without the other. I mean, climate deniers running the show are a threat to all of humanity. And these people will be seen as basically mass murderers. I mean... We lose about 5 million people, 6 million people in the world today because of things like air pollution, climate change, um, food supply, water supply being um, decimated. And air anyway, I think you get the point. Donald Trump and his gang of the horsemen of the apocalypse will go down in history as being mass murderers. Thank you for pointing that out. Well, this isn't much of a, uh, this one here isn't much of a screenshot. Let's turn the, so this next one uh, that we're going to uh, hear from, as long as we're on Extinction Radio, this is 
the other Extinction Radio host, Jennifer Hines, uh, interviewing Guy McPherson about, uh, 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 this is Guy McPherson talking about President Donald Trump for a couple of minutes on Extinction Radio. What, what do you think about the election of Donald Trump, Guy? And, and then add on to that, endemic monetary disparity leading to poverty. You know, after the election in the United States, some of my contemporaries appeared shocked shocked i tell you that the very apex of industrial civilization the united states they had managed to elect a misogynist racist very wealthy person who in from my perspective perfectly represents and exemplifies the culture in the united states and so it certainly wasn't a surprise to me you could have seen it coming from quite a ways away i, I didn't specifically predict that Trump would have been elected, but no matter who was elected, that was the ultimate outcome because that's where we're headed. And you know the old proverb: if you if you keep headed in the direction you're gonna you're you're going, then you're gonna get there. And it, it yep, yep, and we uh, we've already gotten there pretty much. Okay, as long as I got this queued up now, I never mentioned this fellow Jeff Rents. I find that this right-wing Republican, uh, anti-Semitic, uh, Jeff Rents, he, he's in many ways to the right of Alex Jones, I find the man absolutely despicable, okay? You understand that Jeff Rents is a major Donald Trump supporter, right up there with Alex Jones. And but the reason I called on this is that he was interviewing my uh, my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero uh, Gerald Salente, who I'm very embarrassed to admit. Starting about maybe September or October, Gerald Salente uh, turned into a major Donald Trump supporter. So let's go listen to. The one Donald Trump supporter, Jeff Rents, interviewing another Donald Trump supporter one month into the Donald Trump presidency. Take it away. If you don't know the two voices, Jeff is the is the smooth DJ voice, and Gerald Salente is the Yankee. Okay. This is them in conversation. An idiot not to get the picture. What's going on here? All cheered, aided, and abetted by the American, the faithful American Congress and Senate. God, it makes you sick. Yep. Well, you know, I'm glad to hear you speaking also about, you know, I know how positive you felt about Trump, but, you know, you're a man and an open-minded one, and you call it what it is. Yeah. So, and I, I'm the same way. I was very positive on him in what was going on in the economy. And I was also positive on him, what he said about, for example, uh, you know, not getting involved in foreign entanglements. And now I'm seeing the opposite happen. The opposite. Absolutely the opposite. And I made it clear, Gerald has, he, the, look, facts and figures don't lie. How many men and women in the American military were dispatched and deployed in, in Europe and Eastern Europe this week? Go look it up. You don't believe it? Look it up. News. No, of course not. Your, your, your Rents News is reporting it because the rest of them aren't. No, I, I'm, I'll put it up there as long as I can live and breathe. I'll put the truth up or the, the closest thing to it that we can get. And I, I got to tell you, I really had hope for Trump. I'm not counting him out did. yet. I know, I, I, I know, I, I'm, I know. I, I'm not counting him out yet, but every indicator, every primary indicator... Gerald, and you know this, you've already said it tonight, is, is pointing the wrong way. Now, is he being run, or no. was he duping us? That's no, the big no, question. No, he's duped. I, I know, I cannot say the names. I know people on the, that have been there, they know the inside, right. and what you see is what it is. Well, uh, damn. All right, I'll hold it at that. I'm going to take a <laughs> 
And I want just a, a real quick, uh, this, this, uh, this, this one more little snippet of this, and then we'll move on to the print media. The, let's go on to the also the issue of uh, what he said during the campaign about cleaning up Wall Street. Oh, yeah. And who did he bring in? The Goldman Sachs gang. Yep. They're running, they're running the show at every level. That's right. And uh, let's, again, let's call it what it is. The facts are there. It's the Goldman Sachs gang's back in town. The Goldman Sachs gang is back in town. Anyway, I just wonder how long it's going to be before Alex Jones finally sees the light on, on this fucker. Uh, anyway, guys, as I say, I'm already 10 minutes into this rant, and we've barely scratched the surface. So, you know, I already had a three-hour rant going, and then I turn on the... Uh, I turn on the mainstream media news this morning to see if there's anything else that uh, I need to add to this rant. And what do I find? The number one story on planet Earth, according to the editors of Yahoo News, and good for them, is this story from Time Magazine. You know, Donald Trump bragging how many times he's been on the cover of Time Magazine as a show of, of how much Time Magazine loves him. Well, okay, I wonder what Donald Trump's response to this story right here titled Inside Donald Trump's White House Chaos is going to be. I, I've got to say, guys, I'll put the link on to it. If, if, if I had to recommend the number one most spot-on analysis of the Donald Trump White House, uh, it would not even be over at Truth Dig or Alternate. It's here in goddamn Time Magazine as the number one story on the planet. For anybody who doesn't understand this, again, I'm putting the link. I'm just going to read uh, a couple of paragraphs. For two years, Donald Trump mastered the art of disruption. Name a political precept, and he probably broke it during his improbable march to the White House. But disruption in government, the rule maker breaking the rules, turns out to be more costly. In the first month of his presidency, the New York billionaire has witnessed the lesson of Samson. Toppling the temple can be painful if you try it from the inside. Disruption can take many forms. Protesters have filled the streets, blocked airports, and interrupted town hall meetings by lawmakers across the country. Republicans, meanwhile, have been growing increasingly restless with the White House Oversight Committee probing Trump's security protocols for discussing classified information at his weekend retreat in Mar-a-Lago in Senate this is Republican Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell suggesting that the Senate investigation of Russian interference in the, in the election would expand. Others in the GOP have raised concerns that their legislative hopes under unified Republican control could fade given the confusion over Trump's priorities on issues such as tax reform and trade. This is Republican Senator Pat Roberts of, Can of Kansas, quote, there are a lot of questions on the part of the people who took the president home after the dance. <laughs> and in response, the White House has fallen back on its reality show ways distracted by the internecine drama of senior aides who spend their days mixing government business with jockeying for position and favor with the boss. 
Uh, little takes place in the White House these days without a complication or a contradiction. Blah, blah, blah. The result of all this melodrama is a sense of constant chaos for a watchful nation and a crippling anxiety for White House officials. And at the center of this tempest of confusion, Trump has continued to hold court and set the tone, doing things as he has always done them in his own way. Ultimately, Donald Trump is the only person who can calm the storm, fan it further, or just let the show go on. This is, uh, guys, I'm telling you, uh, it's Time Magazine spelling it out. Good Lord. Okay, let's get to the bottom paragraph <coughs> of Time Magazine. If anything it is clear, if anything is clear, it is that the drama will not soon end. The past few weeks have been remarkable for many reasons, but without a clear change in correction, more tumult awaits. It took a four-star general, this is Army General Tony Thomas, it took a four-star general to put the full stakes in context. Quote, our government continues to be an unbelievable turmoil. I hope they sort it out soon because we are a nation at war. As a commander, I am concerned our government be as stable as possible. Good luck. And right next to that story from Time Magazine, here's Christian Science Monitor. Will Trump defy experts on how many crises he can endure. This is the Christian Science Monitor. You know, just more and more people asking the question, how long can this out-of-control, egomaniac, billionaire, uh, this monster, how long can he last? This is the question on the table. Before he self-destructs, uh, with each passing hour, I'll get to the bookies in a minute. So let me go over to Alternet this morning. This morning, these are the headlines on Alternet. <clears throat> A United States of hate has exploded under Trump. Here is 15 tips for defeating the Trumps in your own life. Here is, there is a growing movement across the legal community to plan a nationwide walkout against Trump. Here is, Trump weaves a bizarre blend of Zionism and fascism in making a new Mideast policy. Here is, Trump wants to bring back torture. Here we go. As the White House spirals into Congress, into crisis, what will Congress do? As Trump's White House implodes, congressional Republicans must confront a dilemma, their agenda or their country. Here we go, finally, an environmental story. Trump's border wall will have severe ecological consequences. Moving on to Salon Magazine, can journalists debunk Trump's lies without amplifying them? Uh, and uh, here is, we will not pay the Americans withholding their taxes to fight Trump. You know, if Donald Trump doesn't need to pay any federal income tax, why should any of us, when that motherfucking billionaire is not paying any taxes, why should you and I pay any taxes? You know, it's time for a taxpayer protest. And my favorite 
uh, story of all, he will die in jail, intelligence community ready to go nuclear on Trump, senior sources say. Of course, when you go on to that story, he will die in jail, you find that that story has been taken down by somebody. Uh, can you imagine the, the absolute fantasy of Donald Trump dying in prison? Anyway, guys, uh, as I say, I already, even before <coughs> I opened uh, up today's mainstream and alternative news, I already had way too many stories to get into. I absolutely love this one. Inside the linguistic anatomy of the perfect Trump insult. So this was this linguist by the name of Drake Bayer writing the story, dissecting this, this uh, that we talked about last week, this term shit given, where this congressman calling Donald Trump a shit given. And so some of the others uh, that you, uh, so he, he's going through on, on these tweets and here is uh, a few others. See if you can start connecting the dots between shit given, cockwomble, a cockwomble, a fuck nugget, and my favorite, a jizz trumpet. I absolutely love it, guys, that, that we still have the freedom in this country, in the mainstream media, to go on and find the President of the United States being called correctly a jizz trumpet. <laughs> a, a jizz trumpet. There you go. Our, our, our jizz trumpet in chief. So, what is the connection? Okay. Maybe you have noticed what this is. Okay, if the English major in you is tingling, that's because these insults all share a similar rhythm. Okay, I'm sorry, as linguist Taylor Jones notes, these follow the formula of a single syllable expletive insult, such as shit, piss, cunt, fuck, no, not cocksucker or motherfucker or tits, you know, a single syllable expletive insult followed by a trochi. A, tro a tr trochi is a two syllable word where the first sound is stressed like puffin or womble. Okay? Uh, in poetry, uh, this construction is called an anti. Bacchius. So it is an anti Bacchius. So what you do is you take shit, piss, cunt, fuck, cock, jizz, and follow it with a two syllable noun uh, accented on the first syllable. Uh, is what it's all about, where you come up with piss puffin. You know, piss puffin. Well, it sounds like a good uh, uh, definition. And then, of course, Cheeto is, uh, you, you know, you take your word, a shit Cheeto. Anyway, go ahead and have fun with your jizz trumpet analogies to Donald Trump. Okay, what are the bookies saying now about Donald Trump? It is now a 50-50 bet that Trump will either resign or be impeached. <clears throat> a leading British betting house has now put even odds on the prospect of President Donald Trump resigning or being impeached before the end of his first term. Uh, the new odds were set amid questions swirling about the president's administration having ties to Russia, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is Ledbroke's betting house's listed odds that Trump 
will leave office via impeachment or resignation before the end of his first term as evens, meaning the betting house believes there is a 50% chance of chance Trump will quit the presidency or be forced to leave it by Congress. Uh, anyway, just a few days before, I the, the odds were. I mean, this this is every single day. Uh, it, it was in Trump's favor. Just that was my original story that it, that Trump was still. Uh, people were betting that he would make it. By yesterday, it's down to 50-50. Okay, from the odds makers to uh, James Howard Kunstler weighing in uh, on his blog, Clusterfuck Nation. Uh, he is predicting uh, that the meltdown is going to, the fireworks should start sometime in March or April as the irresolvable debt ceiling debate in Congress grinds to a bitter stalemate and it becomes obvious that there will be no voucher for the great infrastructure spending orgy that, that you know that Trump is cheering on and uh, just all the shit that's going on you know just without help from Donald Trump, all of this is going to overwhelm Trump soon, and he will flounder trying to deal with a gargantuan mess. It will surely derail his wish to make America great again, a la 1962, with factories humming and highways yet to build, and adventures in outer space, and a comforting sense of superiority uh, over all these sad, old, battered empires abroad. I maintain it could get so bad, so fast, that Donald Trump will be removed by a cadre of generals and intelligence officers who cannot stand to watch someone acting like Captain Quig in the pilot house. Did we just hear the closing of the Time Magazine article from a four-star general saying, uh, it's time for this fucker to go. Donald Trump is pissing off everybody from them Muslims and Mexicans to the CIA to his own military. I, I love this hilarious quote from uh, one of these Kennedys, the latest, I don't even know which one it is, uh, wagging his finger to Donald Trump, telling Donald Trump, we're not an authoritarian country. Warning, warning. Uh, yes. Uh, here is another Democrat. This is Representative Eric Swalwell, a Democrat from California. Uh, quote, is he with Russia or the U.S.? Where the I love it where the left wing Democrats are are talking about uh, that commie Donald Trump. Uh, so this is Democrat Democratic Senator Al Franken uh, talking about Senate Republicans. Senate Republicans are worried Donald Trump is mentally ill. Republican senators are concerned President Donald Trump is mentally ill, Democratic Senator Al Franken has claimed in uh, CNN State of the Union. He said he worries a few Republicans uh, are concerned about, quote, the way that we all have this suspicion that Mr. Trump lies a lot. He says things that aren't true. 
that's the same as lying, I guess. Yes, okay, uh, what is, uh, John McCain, Republican John McCain, what is he saying in the mainstream media this week? McCain says Flynn resignation shows dysfunction at the White House. Senator John McCain, Republican from Arizona, said that Michael Flynn's re resignation as national security advisor highlights dysfunction in President Trump's White House and raises fresh questions about the Commander-in-Chief's relation with Russia. McCain, as, who is now the chairman of the Senate Armed Service Committee, uh, is, uh, you know, losing his trust uh, in, in Donald Trump, quote, General Flynn's resignation is a troubling indication of the dysfunction of the current national security apparatus. Uh, Flynn's resignation also raises further questions about the Trump administration's intentions towards Vladimir Putin's Russia, blah, blah, blah. The senator has been a vocal critic, you know, which, of course, uh, remember Donald Trump just blasting. Uh, what is Tom Arnold up to? Tom, Ar Tom Arnold waxes lyrical about Trump's alleged racial slur tape. Uh, so uh, Donald, so uh, Tom Arnold claiming he has one of these tapes that makes this pussy grabbing tape uh, look like nothing. Where where instead of pussy, he's using the c word, he's using the n word, everything else. So uh, you, you know all of these people clamoring for uh, for, and I do believe he has this, uh, but. But what does Tom Arnold claim to anybody who acts like this, uh, this new tape uh, of Donald Trump acting like a racist, sexist pig? Uh, what does he claim? Arnold thinks uh, if he had released the tape during the campaign, it would not have made much of a difference. Quote, I guess talking about this point forward, quote, I don't think it would work. I don't think his people care. He's already talked about sexually assaulting women. You know, nobody's going to give a shit. And, and I need to point out, before I, I wrap this rant up, the only thing that is going to make people give a shit, as my buddy was telling me uh, weeks ago, like, hey, I'm going to pull your head out of your ass. As long as the stock market is going up, 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 Donald Trump is safe it, it, until that goddamn stock market turns around. That is when this motherfucker is going to get run out of town with a stick. Uh, but as long as these clueless fucking morons are, are pouring their money into this goddamn Ponzi scheme known as the U.S. stock market, Donald Trump knows goddamn well that his position is safe. Here is Donald Trump under fire at Berlin Film Festival. And, and uh, then, of course, we have him under fire at, at the Grammys. Uh, but there's one person who is celebrating uh, Donald Trump. This is this Muslim terrorist Hezbollah, Hezbollah leader, uh, General Hassan Nasrallah. This is his quote on on uh, Donald Trump, the leader of Le of Lebanon's Hezbollah, a militant Shiite group. Uh, the U.S. is designated as a foreign terrorist organization. Publicly expressed his optimism over having an idiot in the White House. Quote. We are very optimistic that when an idiot settles in the White House and boasts 
about his idiocy, this is the beginning of relief for the oppressed around the world. He added that Trump has revealed the true face of the U.S. administration, which he calls ugly, unjust, criminal, and racist. You know, celebrating how uh, Donald Trump is the biggest boon to Muslim terrorist organizations' uh, recruitment efforts as he enrages Muslims all over this planet, including the Muslims right here in the United States who are already here, who are now a bigger threat to their fellow Americans than they have ever been. Thank you, Hezbollah, for a... But uh, many Americans uh, are, are responding to this in the most intelligent way out of here. Record number of Americans renounce their U.S. citizenship. There you go. Uh... So, 5,411 Americans re uh, renounced their citizenship or expatriated last year, which is a new record. And of those, over 2,300 of them renounced their citizenship during the last quarter of 2016, coinciding with the election of Donald Trump to the U.S. presidency. And uh, anyway, guys, uh, I was, I still had more. I'm just going to end up on this one since I've already gone over 30 minutes. <clears throat> this thing about Russia considers returning Snowden to U.S. to curry favor with Trump. So we will see whether Russia hands over uh, Edward, the, our, my Humpty Drumpty tribe hero, Eric, uh, uh, Edward Snowden. So what, uh, what is Trump on record, uh, what is his statement on, on Edward Snowden? Of course, remember Edward Snowden being a, a huge hero of Alex Jones, and his gang, Donald Trump on Edward Snowden, quote, I think he is a total traitor and I would deal with him harshly. If I were present, Putin would give him over. Snowden is a spy who should be executed. <laughs> yep. Uh, I cannot think of a better way for Russia to kiss Donald Trump's ass than hand over Edward Snowden to, uh, to Donald Trump. I anyway, guys, I got to round, wrap up this latest edition of, of my Dump the Trump Dehive Roundup rant for, uh, this Thursday, February 16th, but I'm going to come back at you with my regularly scheduled depressed collapsitarian rant and take a wild guess what my my main story in that rant is going to be about for this rant bye guys